Hey guys, it's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, welcome. I post videos every single Thursday, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. Today is a very special video because we are doing a one-year update on one of the most popular videos on this channel, and that's my review of the Yamaha N3X. For those of you who are new to this channel, I got this piano a year ago, and I did a review a few months in. I got a lot of comments saying that I'm sugarcoating everything and only talking about the positives and uh, no issues which I guess was true but I was still in that honeymoon phase it was super new to me and I was super excited about everything so I think this will be a really cool opportunity for me to be honest with you guys I've had over a year with this piano now I've seen the pros and the cons so I can't wait to give you guys this honest one year in review of the Yamaha N3X this piano has been treating me super super well over the past year as some of you may know I live in an apartment so noise complaints are a thing um, I'm also a professional musician which means means I needed the perfect balance of having the best of both worlds. No noise complaints, having the option to practice with headphones if I wanted to, or lower the volume, but at the same time being able to practice the techniques that I need in order to perform. The N3X has the perfect balance of those two things that I mentioned. I truly don't think that I would have been able to develop as much as a musician and pianist this year, having practiced so much at home without this piano. That being said, no piano is perfect, and so I'm going to give you my honest thoughts about some of the problems I've been having with this piano as well as some of the things I absolutely love about it. So first and foremost, I want to talk about the transition from an N3X to an acoustic piano. This was really important to me because I wanted to know if I was able to practice most of the time at home and just check in with how I'm doing on an acoustic piano and also be able to, um, as smoothly as possible, perform on an acoustic with minimal transitional time. And while uh, in my last video I talked about this transition being fairly smooth I still stand by that however I think it's best to have a balance between um, playing on an acoustic sometimes and playing on an N3X even if you spend most of your time on the N3X let me explain so the action on the N3X is quite light and this is coming from a person who um, grew up playing on Yamaha's acoustic, both upright and grand, and I'm well aware that Yamahas are already kind of known for having a lighter action, and so me saying that the N3X has a light action is really saying something, and the reason that matters is that there are certain techniques when you're playing the piano, like certain um, notes that you want to sink into or chords that you want to sink into that can be encouraged by having a little bit of um, resistance from the keys. And so what I found when I was practicing on the N3X for long periods of time without checking in um, with an acoustic piano was that I tended to stray away from those sinking uh, into the piano key motions that you really do need. That being said, what I found is as long as I periodically check in with myself on an acoustic to make sure those um, those techniques of playing, sound production are still there, they're very, very easy to transition back onto the N3X just to make sure that you still have them and then you can perfect them and still practice them on the N3X. When it comes to pedaling, I also realized a few things. First of all, let's establish that pedaling really depends on, uh, well, many factors, but let's just talk about two, the dynamic of a piece and the speed of the piece. So the slower the piece is, the less pedal changes you need because each sound has more time to decay and the softer a piece is, also the faster the notes are gonna decay and the less pedal changes you need. And so as I will mention later on in the video, I do prefer to practice without headphones. I know I said a year ago that headphones are the way to go. I... I'll explain why later. I just don't have, you know, I, I like to be enveloped by the sound that I'm producing. Um, so I do prefer to practice without headphones, uh, but I still don't want any noise complaints. So I would practice at around half volume. And so my pedaling would be affected by that. And when I was preparing for, for example, my undergrad uh, recital playing rock two, I remember the first few times I played on the grand, uh, it was a shock that I actually do need to uh, change my pedal a lot more. It sounded a lot more overwhelming and dirty if I pedal the same way that it would on the N3X. But the same thing that I mentioned about the touch and sound production techniques, as long as you know what you're doing with your pedaling um, and you checked in with yourself uh, with an acoustic grad, it's super easy to maintain those uh, techniques pedaling techniques and whatever you want to do on the N3X. And I just want to clarify, I'm being super picky. I'm not talking about pedal changes where you just, you know, change 
your pedal every half bar or every bar because it's fantastic for that, no issues there whatsoever. I'm talking more about half pedal changes, quarter changes, um, changes where you really have to be sensitive and listening to what's happening in the moment and reactive. Which brings me to my next point, which is half pedal changes and quarter pedal changes. So the idea behind these is that uh, you don't lift your pedal off completely. You lift it off only halfway or a quarter of the way. And so the dampers don't totally dampen the strings, but rather kind of half dampen them. Um, and it creates a really neat color in the sound on an acoustic piano. The problem with the N3X is that it doesn't have any strings, so the sound is produced um, electronically and you don't exactly get all of the colors, and again I'm being super picky, but you don't get all of the colors that you would on an acoustic piano. And so what I'm getting at with all of the points in this video is that the N3X is fantastic at maintaining what you know how to do. Um, it's not necessarily the best place to experiment with different sounds and if any of you guys are in music school or were in music school or ever took private piano lessons at any point, you've probably heard your piano teacher say that you just need to um, sit down at the piano for hours maybe and just experiment with different types of sound you can create um, with different touches, different pedaling techniques. And so that's um, not one of those things that you would necessarily want to use the N3X for. Again, the sound is produced uh, digitally, so it doesn't, you don't have as much control and as many possibilities and colors with what you can create. Next point, here's a pro tip, please don't practice with your headphones off of one ear. Um, that was kind of my first step one was practicing with the full headphones, but I'm kind of paranoid about, you know, what if I don't hear somebody knock at the door? What if I don't hear the, the phone ring or something like that? So I really like to be aware of my surroundings. I don't know, just a personal thing. I guess I'm just paranoid. So I started to take my left uh, headphone off um, and then practice and then I fully took them off. What I realized then a few months ago when I was sharing headphones with somebody in my family was that um, my right ear does not hear as well as my left ear because we were... I had the uh, the right earphone, they had the left one, and I couldn't hear that well when they were at a volume that was comfortable for them. And when I would raise the volume for myself, they would kind of be uncomfortable, but that problem would go away when we switched. So when I had the left earphone in and they had the right. Of course, there's no way I could have noticed this because when I'm in the car or uh, listening to music and headphones, I just adjust the volume to whatever is comfortable for me. I didn't notice, I guess, that I was going louder and louder and louder, but I understand that w when you have one headphone off, you automatically want to turn the volume up even more because you're only hearing it out of one ear. So just take it from me, please don't do that. Um, I do think I uh, harmed the hearing out of one of my ears. And the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to transitioning to an acoustic, I you might have already guessed this, is the volume difference. So especially for someone like me, I'm always practicing at half volume, no headphones now, and so when I go to play on an acoustic, it's really a shock. I'm getting used to it now at how much more powerful and loud it is, and again, this could be easily fixed just by turning up the volume. So if you're not as paranoid as I am, go right ahead, you shouldn't have that issue. But also just keep in mind, if you are turning down the volume, don't exert yourself too much, don't use too much force um, just because you're subconsciously not feeling like you're producing enough sound, keep in mind that that's because the volume is down and your effort is actually going to produce a much stronger and more powerful sound when you're on an acoustic piano. One of the things I love about the N3X is the recording option. So I love that you can just put a USB into the piano and record directly from there. It's a very high quality, no white noise, no AC or no, you know, even if you kind of cough during your own performance. I've never done that, but it's only the music and that's fantastic. I've never had that anywhere else. And um, I also love to use the option of recording straight to the piano and playing it out of the piano while I play something else on top of it, like for uh, two piano or even four hand pieces when you're rehearsing, preparing for rehearsal and you really are dying to know what it's gonna sound like all together, or even if you want to record um, a duet with yourself and yourself, it's great to have that option to really hear what the piece is gonna sound like. That's, that's the feature that I've definitely had the most fun with with this piano. <laughs> Thank you. 
The only thing I would say to be careful about with recording is that make sure you record it with no pedal or be very conscious about the pedaling you are using when you're recording because that same pedaling is going to um, stay in place when you play over top of it. So it truly is like playing four hands on one piano. One person is in charge of the pedaling. So if you uh, record once with pedal, that's where the pedal is going to be. So what I've been doing is recording the part with no pedal and then being in charge of the pedal as I'm playing the second part over top of the recording live. I just want to reiterate that no piano is perfect. You can always pick any piano you have apart, whether it's upright, uh, grand, hybrid, digital. And I just want to say one more time that I love this piano to death. It's literally my favorite piano. It has saved my life for the past year and I'm sure it will continue to do that. It's the perfect balance between being able to practice um, um, professionally and not have to worry about any of the consequences of playing too loud or holding back because you're afraid that a neighbor will get mad at you. I know so many of my peers who are in the same boat and simply do not have the space or the ability to have an acoustic in their home to practice on and I am so lucky to have this piano as an instrument I can practice uh, really, really well on. Again, I don't think I would have been able to develop my musicianship and professionalism um, if I had a digital or anything in between. I think this is truly the perfect piano and the best piano I could have asked for. So again, I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna watch some more of my videos, you can do that right here. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.